All right, folks. We're fixing the garbage truck. Turns out they don't fix themselves. This is a 2003 International 4300 chassis with a leech, I guess, garbage body. Don't know what the model of that is. Has a couple of problems. Sometimes it won't start. It's losing power steering fluid, but there's no external leaks. And it has a clunking noise in the front end. That's all I know. Let's get to it. Like I said, 2003 International 4300. It has the DT466E, so that's the Huey injected version. As far as the power steering goes, the pump is down here. It's shaft driven off of the end of the air compressor. And I don't think there's a seal between the compressor and the output shaft. So if the shaft seal on the pump is leaking, I think it could leak power steering fluid into the engine. And that's where it's going. There aren't really any major external leaks, but they said it will go through like a quart of power steering fluid in, I don't know, a week or something like that. So it's a pretty substantial leak. As far as the clunking goes, I did take the top bolt out of both shocks. They're old and they don't have the gas charge anymore, but they're still functioning as dampers. Don't think the problem is in the front suspension. I think the clunking is actually in the body. That's kind of an interesting way to connect the body to the frame. They've got these big angle iron brackets and then a pad and these bolts with big springs. But the springs are, they're not doing anything, at least not at the front. Now it's got the same kind of a attachment here in the middle and that one's nice and tight. So I think the problem, the, the major problem with clunking is the body clunking on the front of those mounts. Also, the leaf springs are pooched. You can kind of see it if you look at the driveline angle. Maybe if I back up a little bit. You see how the driveline comes down at an angle to this carrier bearing and then it just goes straight back. It shouldn't do that. So the, the rear of this truck has sagged pretty significantly. He also says sometimes the brake lights come on or stay on, but I haven't been able to get that to happen. So I'm not sure how far we're gonna get towards repairing that. Might be able to see it better over here on the right side. So that's what's left of the rubber bump stop. And you see how close that U-bolt is to hitting that saddle. The truck's empty right now. You can imagine what it's like when it's fully loaded. Well, the same kind of mount over here on the right side at the front, but these springs are all broken. At least three out of four of them are broken. So, yeah, that one's broken right there too. Anyway, that's a problem. It's pretty rusty. Shocker, I know. You can see it's already been plated here a couple times, I think, because of rust jacking in the lower frame of this body. A truck's got 330 something thousand miles on it. And that's a, a ton of miles for a truck like this. You can imagine garbage trucks don't get long you know, highway runs. It's all short little trips. And to have that kind of miles, she's uh, she's gotta be pretty well wiped out. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Let's put some UV dye in the power steering fluid. They wanna flush it anyway. So we'll put a quarter ounce of UV dye in there. And then we'll go run it or we'll just let it idle for a while. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that in the engine oil. It may dilute it too much. But when we take the pump off the back of the compressor, hopefully we'll be able to see if it's leaking at that seal. Otherwise, I guess if there is an external leak that we can't see, we might be able to pick it up with the UV dye. Wow, 
this thing is undrivable. Jeepers, I'm going to have to edit that out. It's going to make everybody sick. Almost makes me sick. The body bounces on the frame and it's like an amplifying effect. It makes the, the front suspension bounce twice as much as it normally would. The best analogy I can give is if you've ever driven a Bobcat and you get a little bit of a, a shake to it, then it makes your hand shake on the control and then it amplifies the shake and it it's this feedback loop that won't stop until you take your hands off the controls. That's what it's like to drive this truck. That is sketchy. Very sketchy. Alright guys, I went ahead and pulled the power steering pump off. There's nothing to it. Two bolts, two hoses, and it slides right off the back of the compressor. And like I thought, there is no seal at the back of the compressor, so engine oil basically washes the face of this pump the whole time the engine's running, which means that our dye testing is going to be... It's not conclusive. I can see something, but I don't know if it's really a leak. It's hard to say, and I have no way to test this off the truck. So we're just going to have to go with our gut. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and replace it just for peace of mind. We've got to start somewhere. Also, can you believe that a power steering pump for a 2003 International 4300, one of the most popular trucks that International made, this power steering pump obsolete from the dealer? I just about couldn't believe it. Anyway, I found an aftermarket source. They had them, no big deal, but that's some pretty poor parts support from International. Dang it. Where would the gasket fall? Right into the bucket of oil. I really hate this gasket. That thing's not fun at all. Why won't that sucker stay up there? Alright folks, that should be it for the power steering. Like I said, it's pretty simple. And I did also replace this hose. That's the main pressure line from the pump to the steering gear. The old one was pretty shabby, so I had a new one made up. And this is just a return line. There's no pressure there. That's a suction line from the reservoir to the pump. That hose is pretty stiff and hard, but there's no pressure there and I don't think it's leaking anywhere. So yeah, it's got to be an internal leak. And I suppose people will ask me if it's possible to just replace the seal instead of replacing the pump. And my answer is possibly. But in my experience, usually by the time the seal wears out, the rest of the pump is completely worn out. And the internal clearances have gotten wide enough in the pump that it's spilling too much. And that's what's actually caused the seal to fail. That or the shaft has a groove worn in it. So by the time you mess around fixing all that stuff, you might as well just replace the pump.
Heads up, this is gonna spring, so don't uh, don't let it bite you.
course, a smarter person would have put this in before I put the spring on. Well, that's where it's going to sit. It's got the full weight on it right now. We picked up some. It's not as much as I was hoping for, but it's a definite improvement. So, yeah. I found a bad tire though, so we're waiting on some new tires. I swear to God, if I get one comment about penetrating oil, I'm shutting down the channel. had some problems. Uh, long story short, the garbage truck is done and it's gone and I don't have any more video of that process. I think when we left off, I was trying to remove these bolts that hold the body to the frame. I got them both out, but they were in bad shape. The threads are galled and you see it's worn significantly on one side. So I had to order new bolts. I also found a bad tire when I was putting the wheels back on. So the customer went to get a new tire. I ordered the new bolts. 
And by the time we got both those things back here, I was just out of time. They had to have the truck, I think that same day, and I didn't have time to, to mess around with the camera. So yeah, unfortunately I didn't catch any of that process. I thought they were gonna bring it back. We were gonna install four more of the springs on the body, and then I wanted to retorque the U-bolts. Uh, but unfortunately winter kind of jumped on us and we got a foot of snow and then it's now it's like 10 below zero right now fahrenheit i think that's i don't know minus 25 celsius or something like that it, it stupid cold so when that happens usually you know, everybody goes kind of into a holding pattern including me and uh, we probably won't see them until we get a little break in the weather so we got somewhere between nine inches and a foot of really light powdery snow about a week ago then it got bitterly cold and the wind came up and it's just been blowing it everywhere you see most of the snow is actually blown off and it's drifting so bad they can't hardly keep the the roads open school's been canceled they've had late starts every day it's a mess anyway here's the springs that i pulled off i'm pretty sure the left side has been replaced at some point the U-bolts were different, the bolts holding the eye on were different, uh, but the right side, if we can get it out of the snow, yeah, it's broken, come on. So that, yeah, the top leaf is actually broken right in half. And I didn't see that before we removed it. So it was a good call. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I actually bought the springs right from the international dealership. I tried to get them from a spring shop. We just, we don't have a good spring shop here. We have got a couple places that do it, but they're just terrible. So they, they told me they could get them. But then when I actually went to order them, he told me I had to take them off bring them down to their shop, they would measure them, and then it was going to be two to three weeks before we get the springs. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't have a, a garbage truck torn apart in my shop for three weeks. And the owners of the truck, they can't have the truck down for three weeks. So I don't know how, I don't know how they stay in business with that kind of a, that kind of turnaround. I bought the springs from the dealership. They had them the next day. They cost, I mean, it was within... 10% of what the spring shop wanted for aftermarket springs. I bought the U-bolts and the hardware and everything right from International. Yeah. All right, I'm going back inside, it's cold. Yep. Some days that boring old office job really doesn't seem so bad.